Christ, having risen from the dead, dies now no more. Death will no longer have dominion over him. Alleluia. We continue our celebration of the Easter season, gathering in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> the peace of God be with you. My brothers and sisters, as we gather, let us call to mind the gracious and generous love of God and God's forgiveness. And praying for one another, we say, I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words and what I have done and what I have failed to do through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, perfect light of the blessed, by whose gift we celebrate the Paschal Mysteries. Bring us, we pray, to rejoice in the full measure of your grace. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The apostles and the brothers who were in Judea heard that the Gentiles, too, had accepted the word of God. So when Peter went up to Jerusalem, the circumcised believers confronted him, saying, You entered the house of uncircumcised people and ate with them. Peter began and explained it to them step by step, saying, I was at prayer in the city of Joppa, when, in a trance, I had a vision, something resembling a large sheet coming down, lowered from the sky by its four corners, and it came to me. Looking intently into it, I observed and saw the four-legged animals of the earth, the wild beasts, the reptiles, and the birds of the sky. I also heard a voice say to me, Get up, Peter, slaughter and eat. But I said, Certainly not, sir, because nothing profane or unclean has ever entered my mouth. But a second time a voice from heaven answered, What God has made clean, you are not to call profane. This happened three times, and then everything was drawn up again into the sky. Just then, three men appeared at the house we were, where we were, who had been sent to me from Caesarea. The Spirit told me to accompany them without discriminating. These six brothers also went with me, and we entered the man's house. He related to us how he had seen the angel standing in his house, saying, Send someone to Joppa and summon Simon, who is called Peter, who will speak words to you by which you and your household will be saved. As I began to speak, the Holy Spirit fell upon them as it had upon us at the beginning, and I remembered the word of the Lord, how he had said, 
John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. If then God gave them the same gift he gave to us when he came to when we came to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, who was I to be able to hinder God? When they heard this, they stopped objecting and glorified God, saying, God has then granted life-giving repentance to the Gentiles, too. The word of the Lord. A thirst is my soul for the living God. As the hind longs for the running waters, so my soul longs for you, O God. A thirst is my soul for God, the living God. When shall I go and behold the face of God? Send forth your light and your fidelity. They shall lead me on and bring me to your holy mountain, to your dwelling place. Then will I go to the altar of God, the God of my gladness and joy. Then will I give you thanks upon the harp, O God, my God. Alleluia, alleluia. I am the good shepherd, says the Lord. I know my sheep and mine know me. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. A hired man who is not a shepherd and whose sheep are not his own sees a wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away, and the wolf catches and scatters them. This is because he works for pay and has no concern for the sheep. I am the good shepherd, for I know mine and mine know me, just as the Father knows me and I know the Father, and I will lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. These also I must lead, and they will hear my voice, and there will be one flock, one shepherd. That is why the Father loves me, because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down on my own. I have power to lay it down and power to take it up again. This command I have received from my Father. The Gospel of the Lord. During the Easter season, we hear a lot from the uh, book of the Acts of the Apostles. Uh, and it's appropriate because the Acts are full of uh, all kinds of information uh, about the growth of the church uh, following the resurrection of Jesus. Um, how that community grew and how it came to a deeper understanding of the meaning of Jesus' life and death and resurrection. And we hear uh, in today's reading uh, from the Acts uh, how Peter, uh, as a leader in the church, uh, came to understand uh, more deeply what Jesus' life was really all about. You know, there was an understanding that Jesus had come among them um, as a Jew, as one of their own, and had come for them only. And then Peter gradually understands, by the help of the Holy Spirit, that no God's intention is to send a message in Jesus to the whole world, to everyone, no matter what their religious belief or ethnicity might be. Now, this doesn't come instantly to Peter. He doesn't... Uh, receive this message all at once. 
but through a series of messages, a series of, of visions, of dreams, uh, and starts to understand over time, gradually, what God's purpose is. And even understanding when he looks back at events that have happened uh, in the past, and he starts to see the pattern of God's movement, of God's direction in his life, in the life of the fledgling Christian community, the followers of Jesus, and what that means in the life of, of everyone, including the Gentiles, the non-Jews, the non-believers. Now, Peter takes a, a good deal of flack for this because uh, there, are, there are people who are not quite so ready to admit that, uh, that God is acting in the lives of those who are non-Jews, non-believers, the Gentiles. So it takes some time for, for them, too, to understand that that was God's purpose. And so uh, in our tradition, we understand that, um, that God's movement was a movement for the world. God's intentions were all for all peoples. And so we, uh, we need to hold in our prayers uh, all those of the world that they will understand and be touched by the presence of God, by the Holy Spirit of God in their lives. And that we treat them as, uh, as children of God, everyone, uh, as we see and look for uh, look for the movement of the Spirit in their lives and the grace that God has given to each one of them in their life. So we broaden, like Peter did, broaden our understanding, broaden our horizons, broaden our respect for all that God has made and all that God has called to life. Well, let us gather our prayers. <clears throat> we pray for ourselves and we pray for all of the church community that we may be constantly alert to the movement of the Spirit in our own lives and in the lives of others, that we may appreciate how the message um, that was sent to us, brought to us in the life of Jesus, how that is meant for all people, we pray. We hold in our prayers uh, those who live in parts of our world that know a great deal of violence and conflict. We pray for those who live in countries where they are uh, suffering so much from the coronavirus. We pray. We pray for all those who have died, especially uh, Jerry, whom we remember today. And for all those who have birthdays this day, we pray. We pause now to call to mind those other prayers that we bring with us this day. For these we pray. For all those who are sick and all those who have asked our prayers, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. O oh, holy God, we bring these prayers before you. Hear our needs and grant what we need. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.
How blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this bread to offer which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us our spiritual food. Blessed are you, God of creation. Through your goodness, we have this wine to offer, the fruit of the vine, the work of human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that our offering may be acceptable to God the Almighty. <clears throat> Receive, O oh Lord, these offerings of your exultant church, and as you have given her cause for such great gladness, grant also the gift we bring that the gifts we bring before you may honor you. We ask this through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. <coughs> Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For with the old order destroyed, a universe cast down is renewed, and integrity of life is restored to us in Christ. Therefore, in paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Indeed, you are holy, O Lord. You are the source of all holiness. And we ask you to make holy these gifts by sending down your spirit upon them so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. The time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, he broke it. He gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the cup. Once again, he gave you thanks, and giving it to his disciples, he said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the cup of salvation, giving thanks that you have counted us worthy to be in your presence and to serve you. We pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Lord, remember your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Blaise, our Bishop. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all those who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your presence. Have mercy on us all that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with St. Paul and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, our glory and honor is yours forever and ever. We join our voices now to pray the words Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done 
on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil and grant us peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we might be free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look then not upon our sins, but upon the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom, where you live forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And let us show to each other some sign of the peace of Christ. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. <clears throat> Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world, happy and blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Look with kindness upon your people, O Lord, and grant that those you were pleased to renew by these eternal mysteries may attain the incorruptible glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And may the blessing of God come upon you, the blessing of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Our Mass has ended. Let us go forth in the peace of God.